Welcome back to the Tom Hartman program. I'm Alex Lawson filling in for Tom. And uh, joining us on the phone is investigative journalist Lee Fong with The Intercept. Lee, thanks for joining us on the Tom Hartman program. Hey, Alex, thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, you have an enormous amount of uh, awesome material under your byline. Uh, and they do make fun of me uh, in the studio here because they say I only talk about three things, which isn't entirely true. Uh, but I definitely do talk about prescription drugs, high drug prices, and the amazing power uh, and corrupting power of the pharmaceutical industry, of drug corporations, and their just enormous amounts of money that they spend to corrupt the process from start to finish. And you had an amazing piece uh, looking at one aspect of this, which I think is somewhat shocking, even for people who know just how uh, the, the tactics and the lengths to which drug corporations will go to protect their profits and high drug prices. Yeah, you know, um, and I, I know that you've done so much, Alex, to highlight the right-wing assault on entitlement programs. And uh, a major aspect of that is how uh, pharmaceutical companies have used their lobbying power in Washington, D.C. to capture uh, the money that's supposed to be spent on uh, seniors and other, um, you know, vulnerable citizens and, and citizens that need part of that safety net uh, and, and instead channel that money to private profit. And, um, you know, this is this ongoing debate about uh, drug prices um, has kind of uh, compelled the drug lobby to engage uh, much more aggressively. We, we see Donald Trump talking about the problems of drug prices. We see Democrats reviving the issue. It's something that they used to talk about a lot more, but in, in recent months, um, Democrats on Capitol Hill have um, uh, kind of grown a, a backbone on this issue. So with uh, senators led by uh, Senator Al Franken proposing legislation, um, kind of, uh, he, he has one proposal that has uh, many provisions, but one of those provisions uh, really spooks uh, the drug industry, and that's a provision that would repeal the 2003 law that prohibits uh, Medicare from using its collective bargaining power to negotiate for cheaper drug prices. Other um, uh, government agencies, um, uh, first and foremost, the Veterans Administration is able to use its collective uh, bargaining power to reduce and, 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 and negotiate for cheaper drug prices, but drug lobbyists uh, inserted a provision back in 2003 that prevents the medi prevents Medicare from doing um, the same type of negotiation, and so with uh, Al Franken pushing this proposal that would save the government and seniors lots of money, um, we see the drug industry fighting back. And you know, I, I wrote this this little piece here, uh, just highlighting one of the many ways um, that they're kind of covertly um, attacking this proposal. You, you know, if you if you live or work in the Washington D.C. area and you open any of the um, newspapers or political magazines. Um, and you flip through them, you, you'll see these full-page advertisements in almost every publication, the Washington Post, the Washington Times, The Hill, uh, Roll Call, Politico. Um, and, you know, it's from these seemingly independent groups saying, you know, keep government bureaucrats out of our Medicare. Let's not allow them to ration our drugs. You know, all these um, proposals are, go are, are going to hurt seniors. But what, what's really happening is that uh, the pharmaceutical lobby is funding uh, what appears to be independent groups to attack efforts to cut into their profits by allowing the government uh, to negotiate for lower drug prices. And uh, they're not concealing or they're not revealing their money. They're, they're doing it covertly. They're, they're funding groups that are acting as third parties to um, justify uh, attacks on, on uh, Al Franken's bill. So, Lee, uh, you know, Social Security Works, the organization that I'm executive director of, we fight uh, very squarely as one of our key uh, areas is to lower drug prices. So we've endorsed the Al Franken bill, and uh, we are doing everything we can to push for it because you said this right at the beginning. In our view of things, uh, Social Security is about economic security. It's a very broad economic security, and there can be no economic security. Let's say we win our battle to expand Social Security benefits, but if drug prices keep going up 10% a year, 
Uh, and all that money goes into the pockets of drug corporation executives and their Wall Street uh, paymasters. That's not benefiting the people. So we have to on fight on three uh, fronts for this broad economic security, expand Social Security, expand Medicare, improve and expand Medicare, and lower drug prices. And when it comes to drug prices, uh, the drug corporations and their lobbyists, uh, say, sometimes shorthand pharma, that's the uh, specific trade association, but they, all, they operate through a litany of shadowy uh, groups, and they'll build front groups. I saw one on Twitter that was just an anonymous advertisement, which I didn't even know was allowed. And it kept getting targeted to me because I talk about high drug prices all the time. But pharma, their entire business model is actually to corrupt Congress. Uh, we pay, the taxpayers pay for almost all of the development of new drugs at the NIH or through university uh, grants, public university grants. We pay the taxpayers uh, to grant and protect patents. And then we, the taxpayers, pay the highest drug prices in the world. Uh, and we don't have to do any of that. So the Franken bill has 16 provisions that are all aimed at lowering drug prices, uh, including Medicare negotiation and the very sensible allowing us to import drugs from just the second highest market in the, in the world, which is Canada. And all of this... Uh, uh, drug corporations know they can't actually win on the merits, so they try to corrupt the debate. And your piece is showing that they really will go to pretty extreme lengths of just funding uh, organizations to make it seem like the people are up in arms, that, you know, that uh, legislators are going to put bills that would lower our drug prices when the exact opposite is the truth, that the American people are completely fed up with high drug prices. And it's Republicans, yeah. Democrats, Independents, Tea Party. The American people are clear they that drug prices are too high, and they're sick and tired of it. Yeah, you know, um, the, the drug industry, like a lot of big industries, but I think particularly the drug industry, just because they've become so innovative, not in terms of uh, coming up with new cures for uh, diseases, but innovative in the sense that they have a very sophisticated uh, lobbying and marketing machine. Uh, they're very good at... Um, uh, distributing their product and maintaining political control over policymakers in Washington. And, and part of that political control um, is, you know, if, if, if you're an individual on Capitol Hill or, um, you're, you know, you're a voter back in someone's district and you, and you want to do, do the right thing um, uh, and, and, you're, and you're looking out and, and seeing all the stakeholders involved, if you're seeing all these names of physicians groups, independent anti-tax groups, progressive organizations all popping up and saying, hey, let's vote against that Al Franken bill, you know, that might sound persuasive, but what, what, what happens, uh, what tends to happen in these debates and what we're seeing happen right here is that the pharmaceutical companies know that they're unpopular. They know that the American people um, are against this type of extremely crass uh, profit making that, you know, they have complete monopolies over um, these drug patents and they keep jacking up the prices. Um, uh, so what they've done is covertly work through independent seeming third party groups. You know, my piece highlights just two of those groups, American, American Conservative Union and Americans for Tax Reform. But they have a long history of working with um, patients groups, even progressive organizations. We saw this in the um, ballot initiative last year. Uh, there was a big ballot initiative in, in California, one of the most expensive in the country. But it kind of got overshadowed by the presidential race. But there was a a very expensive um, ballot initiative to allow Medicaid, uh, the Medi-Cal program in, in California, simply pay the same uh, rates for drugs that the VA already pays. So, you know, kind of instant uh, uh, cost reduction. But the uh, pharmaceutical lobby got together and they funded veterans organizations. They funded LGBT groups. Uh, they funded everyone that, that could seem sympathetic across the board to come out and oppose this measure. So this is a, a tried and true tactic for the industry. And now that we're in a new Congress with a new political climate, with seemingly Democrats and some Republicans like, like Trump agreeing that something needs to be done on drug prices, they're rolling out this, this same tactic. Because, you know, if, if you see a, an argument from Pfizer or Bristol Myers Squibb saying, no, 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 the status quo is great. We don't need 
drug price reduction legislation, you know, no one would believe them. They would just simply look at their their 10K and see that these, these companies are spending lots of money on advertising and marketing and lobbying. They're spending relatively little on actual um, innovation and, and drug research, and they're simply trying to pad their profit by keeping the status quo. So, of course, you don't see the companies, you know, openly attacking these organizations, these these proposals. They're working through these third parties that seem to have more credibility. Lee Fong from The Intercept, uh, his piece, Big Pharma Funds, Independent Advocacy Groups Attacking Drug Price Reduction Bill. Uh, amazing journalism, Lee. Thank you so much for joining us on the Tom Hartman program. Hey, thanks for having me, Alex. Take care. So this is uh, just a fight Lee brought up in California. They spent more money on that ballot initiative uh, on no than any other ballot initiative on the no and yes side combined. Pharma will go to extraordinary lengths to protect their monopolies because they know as soon as the people realize that there is no reason drug prices are so high, the game ends for them. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. I'm Alex Austin. We'll be right back.